I think if I was the lead character in this movie, it would have ended real quick. It would have been <laughs> it would have been like a thirty to one minute second, a thirty <laughs> second to one minute movie, and uh, it would just be me like uh, brushing a horse, and then the cloud this weird thing would come and I would go, nope. And I go back inside and it's over <laughs> yeah. and I forget it. I move and that's it. Yeah, that's it. Shut it down, move, get out of there. Yeah, for sure. Nope. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of BJ at the Movies. I am B. And I am J. And we just watched Nope. Yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. Mm. It's very important to let them know specifically when. Directed by Jordan Peele. But it's written, directed, and produced by Jordan Peele. And that is what really sold me on this movie. We started talking about directors. Yeah. And, you know, when Quentin Tarantino releases a new movie, you're going to go see it because it's Quentin Tarantino. Yeah. Um, Michael Bay? <laughs> Maybe uh, me personally. <laughs> when Michael Bay's coming with a new movie, it's not necessarily my absolute must-see. Do you know any other directors? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. What Do about you... Bob Zemeckis? No, you don't even know who that is. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> This is a movie about a dad and his son. They are horse trainers for movies. And they have a long family history of being involved in film with horses. Some sort of supernatural type stuff is going on. They're not sure what is this. Even though there's this phenomenon going on and you're terrified, they want to monetize it. I think that's a big, uh, a big, um, what's one of those things? Uh, what did you think of the opening scene? As uh, people will get to know, I'm a big mark for opening scenes as a... <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me fun. let me ask you that instead. It seems like a random hailstorm on a sunny day, and he no sells it. Yeah, he's a big no seller in wrestling business. That is like Hulk Hogan back in the day when uh, someone would do their finishing move to him. You think he's beat up, and then he would just go. <sighs> he like it doesn't affect him all, and a big boot, leg drop, match over. So this guy no sells the hailstorm, no sells the stuff coming out of the sky, no big deal to him. But then the thing that stood out to me the most was him looking at his dad still on the horse. He kind of stared yeah. at him slump off the horse and fall, and he was just like, and then he like ran yeah. full speed. Opening scene, effective. I don't think it's one of my favorites. We, we start, we're introduced to his sister, played by Kiki Palmer. Yeah. And her name in the movie is Emerald, mm. OJ's sister, yeah. who does an incredible job. Incredible. A big standout Agreed. in this movie. Yeah. Has that energy that you just want to be around. Really draws you tons, in. Really fun. Tons of energy. Tons of charisma. Yeah. Uh, he's good with the horses. Very yeah. good. He's like a horse whisperer, calm, which is good for a ho horse. A ho for a horse. <laughs> That's good for a hoe. They both. Yes, they come around uh, the hoe. Yeah. <laughs> It's just an interesting contrast between them. He's very like solemn and to himself and calm, no selling everything. <laughs> yeah. And she is a ball of energy. Yeah. The thing I enjoyed the most was the visuals. Yeah. Beautiful location that they're using this house, right? It, um, with the sky in the background, this big, big country sky. And then you have uh, the wacky, wailing, inflatable tube men shots that are just so good. There's blood raining down on the house and how it just coats the house like you're like uh, icing a cake or something. And it's just flowing all over the house. The blood of all the people that have been sucked up by whatever this thing is. Yeah. When OJ is either running or driving away from this creature, the way that it's like a single shot and it feels like you're running with him and it's kind of looking up and it's constantly moving. And you're, yeah. it's kind of like you're looking and he's still there. Is it still there? And you're not allowed to look at it. Don't look at it. You're not supposed to look at it. Yeah. It was stunning. It yeah. was a big project. He does such an incredible job telling this story and bringing us on this journey, I thought, through the camera work and through the shots. And, I mean, there's so many things that stand out, and one of those is the cinematography. It's definitely his, like you say, his best work in terms of, you know, just how the movie looks. Man, it's, it's so beautiful. What's, what's more commercial and phony than this <laughs> inflatable tube guy forced – yeah. To, like, get your attention, to go buy some crap. And like you say, the suspense of knowing that there's so many of them that as they start dying, the thing is getting closer because mm -hmm. as it goes over, electricity it was like, dies. They do a really good job with lights in this one. Yeah, like I mentioned Jurassic Park. It was like, remember when you saw the dinosaur's footprints or something? Or you could see the, the water, water. or you'd hear the... 
boom. Yeah, and the water starts it's, it's yeah. shaking. Of course. So that Jeff Goldblum when he's like staring at the cup or whatever. Exactly, staring at the cup. So yeah. now you're staring at things that are losing power. Yeah. And you're like, here it comes. Ricky Park, played by Steven Yuen. So this guy went through a chimpanzee attack. Yeah. Where the chimpanzee, I think, killed multiple people. It looked like it, it killed massacre, pretty much everyone on set. But he took that trauma and he commercialized it. And he has yeah. a room full of memorabilia from that show. He says, like, European tourists come in and they pay 50 grand to spend a night yeah. in there or whatever. I don't know the amount. Taking nature and trying to use it for monetary gain or attention or notoriety. Like, messing with nature. Trying to harness it for your own power and your own uh, gain, like you say. Yeah, I mean... I think Jordan Peele in all his movies does a really good job putting things out there and then letting it, letting the audience interpret it. How did you feel about how this movie uses humor? I don't think the humor got in the way of the movie. I needed some moments of reprieve. I needed some moments where it gave me a chuckle because you're on this thrill ride and it's so intense a lot of the time that you get these little chuckles and you can be like, okay, it's okay to laugh, even though I know some more bad stuff is coming. <laughs> Obviously, you're looking for the scenes where they say nope. And you, yeah. pop, you pop it the first one. And there's moments and where the crowd is like saying nope. You know, they're like, yeah. you know, because that's like a classic horror movie thing. Don't go in there. Don't go in there. Don't follow mm -hmm. them in there. What are you insane? And nope. The kids that had like the alien monkey costumes made me think of signs a little bit. Because in signs, you do see an alien sort of at one point, but you're not sure. At your first thought is, holy fuck. And then eventually we're like, please don't make it just over the top alien, whatever. We're gonna be around these things all the time and it's gonna turn into one of those. Goes completely in the opposite direction. And he punched <laughs> one of those kids in the face. That was so good. Uh, he took a punch. Yeah, oh, he ate that punch. He ate that Fine. punch. Uh, do you think the fact that his name is OJ has obviously it's got some meaning? It's a very interesting choice. It's a very, it seems deliberate. OJ Simpson, who, That's me, the first who thing me, that comes OJ Simpson, who like me and you know as. An innocent man, no, <laughs> no. As, a controversial um, figure in America for sure. What really changed the, I think, the landscape of trials and the way they're filmed and the way they're yeah. monetized and the way they're broadcasted and shared with the public. Yeah. And the way the way we get so caught up in them and obsessed by and the them. Lawyers got famous, became celebrities out of it. Even lawyers became celebrities. Then we got the Kardashians eventually. Mm, good. And one of the things that really reminded me of is the Simpsons. Halloween episode where all the mascots, the giant mascots, oh, come to life. Yeah, for sure. The donut guy, the the yeah. hardware lumberjack guy, <laughs> and they start destroying the city. Yep, lard And lad. everyone is reporting on it and screaming and running and da 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 da. da. And then they realize, just they have that song. Just don't look. Just don't oh, look. Yeah. <laughs> That's so true. If you want the monsters to stop killing everybody, just don't look. We definitely have to talk about how this is like a love letter to the crew. And so there's a lot of uh, dialogue and a lot of talk and a lot of words that are common on a film set that probably resonate a lot with people that have been on a film set and especially with people that have worked on a crew before. And I feel like a lot of this movie is a love letter to those people. Every single person, I'm going to be the next Tarantino. Everyone wants to be the director. When I, was, when I was sitting there and they asked, I mean, I was one of those people. You said, I want to be an extra. <laughs> yeah, and that is where I've done, I've fulfilled my dream, ladies and gentlemen. Falling down slowly. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like this movie? Because we came out of it and you no sold it. You didn't say whether you liked it, loved it, hated it. You said, I, I got to process this like the monster and digest all the stuff and spit out some blood. I feel like I enjoyed the pieces of this movie more than itself as a whole. It did bring me on a roller coaster of emotions. Well, I may, actually, you know what? Maybe not a roller coaster, but a teacup of emotions. I don't know. <laughs> like a really fast teacup spinning, <laughs> making you go crazy. Just a little teacup. Because there was you know, just moments of like spinning, and then I was kind of neutral about it. I don't think it's like one of my favorite movies of all time. I don't think it's better than Get Out. And I don't know if I fully even understand this movie. I know uh, Logan Paul really didn't like this movie people went nuts uh as they will and saying he's stupid am i stupid is it possible to to enjoy so much about a movie without loving the the whole thing put together yeah i i, I guess so because it's happening right now i on the other hand really enjoyed this movie <laughs> i loved it i thought it was fantastic all it, around really but basing it off of all those things that you've talked about the acting the cinematography the all the p bits and pieces that we talk about, 
come together in a really great way. I thought he tells the story so beautifully, and I had a great time. Really enjoyed it. If you like the other Jordan Peele movies and you're, and you're a fan of them, this is a must-watch Jordan Peele movie, I would say. Well, he's only got three. Well, <laughs> well. <laughs> what happens if he did two really good ones and one shitty one? He didn't. He's got three bangers. Let's fucking go. All right. All right. <laughs> and I think maybe if I see it again, I might like it even more. I'm a little bit too dumb. I need two times to get it fully. I too don't dumb. know. Too but dumb. I'm the dummy, and you're the genius. He's B, and I'm J. That was Nope. And uh, that's it. Subscribe to our channel. Smash, smash the, the like, like button. button. Let's go. If you like what you saw, subscribe, all of that bullshit. <laughs>